If you're listening to me live, you are listening to me on my Blip and YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening. And, man, it's been a very interesting week in the world of uh, wrestling. And, well, not so interesting is uh, Monday Night Raw ratings. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. For the second time this year, WWE's ratings have gone to the peripheral, the peripheral crapper. It is. Let's see. It is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is a 2.5. Once again, the ratings when they were, were the lowest since, well, since earlier this month, earlier, well, a couple, like one month earlier. I mean, back in um, Labor Day, it was 2.5 at Labor Day. And now it just seems it's getting the same thing. And this is the go-home show for Monday Night Raw. This is the go-home show, people. This is the show that gets people hyped for the next pay-per-view, which is Hell in a Cell. This is one of the most, supposedly one of the most biggest important pay-per-views. And, well, the WWE is like, eh, who really cares? It's like, well, eh. It's 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 really is, and we all know the reason why it's dying is because let's all be real. Let's be real here. It is the three hours. The three hours of this thing is killing it. No one is going is no one's going to be watching a show for three hours. I mean, as you already know, Raw is soon. It's more of a um, uh, when I'm uh, doing my uh, podcast, a live um, riffing of Monday Night Raw. I look at it as like, man, it is three hours. It's a chore to get through Monday Night Raw. When you look at it as a as a fan, it's like it's a chore. That's the problem. It's a chore. When it's a chore to get through these three hours. Guess what happens? You know, people are not going to go into, um, people are not going to stick around for a minute. No one's going to stick around to watch uh, a show that, honestly, uh, it, it just keeps, uh, people are not going to stick around for three hours. Two hours for pushing it, but now you have three hours, three hours to fill. That is, it, it gets to the point that no one's going to really watch the show and everything else. Plus the fact that where the WWE is trying to do the whole kids thing, you know, they're trying to get kids involved, trying to market for more of a family audience. Which is honestly, I'm gonna say this, I think it's a smart move because uh, WCW back in the '90s did that, and it can work. You can have a uh, a family oriented wrestling show with just straight up wrestling and not much type of swear words and everything else. You can have that. Heck, I mean. Football, 
basically, you know, if you cut out the bad diet, all the, um, you know, the cursing and stuff, it's a PG type of environment with crushing your heads and everything, you know, like the injuries and such. But still, it's still a family-oriented thing in the NFL, um, NBA, that sort of thing. You can still take your families to these events. With wrestling, I can see why they're trying to do something. They're they're trying really, really hard to to get the family demographic. And I think it's trying and they're trying to please like two audiences: the audience like myself, who's been watching for most of their lives, and this new audience. And honestly, you can do that. But what I, I mean, you can do this. You can please both audiences if they really in my personal opinion, just start making, you know, you don't need like swearing and all these untyped storylines and such, but I think mostly what pro wrestling wrestling fan base would need is, honestly, consequences. Consequences are something that I think uh, the WWE, if they put a more consequence-oriented style into their storytelling, I believe the show would be completely better. Let's be honest, I mean, let's remember, John Cena was hyping up this whole fight with the uh, whole match with The Rock back at WrestleMania. Then this is the most important match of his career. Da, 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 da. And then he lost, and it wasn't really a bit of a change for his character. He just moved on to Brock Lesnar, which honestly, he did show a little bit of um, hesitation, but honestly, it, it gets to the point of like, you know what? Um, Cena, I mean, he didn't have a, a crisis. I didn't see any type of consequence of him losing to Rock or uh, losing about Lesnar. And as the year, or um, like he won against Rock Lesnar, maybe that hides it or something. But overall, he still himself. He never really had any type of of any type of um, you know consequences to his actions, any type of you know regret or, or anything else. He had just one somber promo, and that was it. That 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 is the problem. You just have no no one has a consequence. There's no consequences to environments. I mean, WWE used to have that. I mean, heck, in the back in the '90s and '80s and the Attitude Era and such, which is honestly, they need they had consequences. Everyone had a consequence. I mean, see how Vince McMahon could go so far and to I mean, for example, how Vince McMahon. Early on, the Vincent Man versus Stone Cold type of thing. Um, you can see how Stone Cold riling things up. There's a consequence of him getting screwed out of the WWE Championship. You see that? You see how him causing, you know, Vincent Man and everything else, or what have you, and everything else, um, you know, how that dynamic, and then eventually Vince said, screw you, I'm going to fire you, and he did. He actually fired Stone Cold Steve Austin. As a consequence, see, and people were just, oh, my God, I got to watch next week's Raw. I got to watch next week's uh, Raw and see the pay-per-view, what's going to happen, because you knew there was going to be a consequence. Today, there's no real consequences, and in, in it's just, just matches and rematches and just nothing really exciting. The only thing exciting was CM Punk, and they just dragged that thing to the ground and not only dragged it, they just beat it, uh, cut its head off, and basically um, buried it and poured salt all over it. It basically, they destroyed it. Like, um, I know I'm being a hyperbole, um, a bit, um, you know, <laughs> using some hyperbole, but still, it, he, I mean, it, it just looks like the WWE doesn't really know how to, you know, really when they have something they're doing, they just try to mitigate, they try to get people over who already are over, they're you know, trying to get over uh, people who are they don't really need to be over, like Triple H, for example. I don't know why Triple H needed to be there unless to put Punk over. Punk needed to go over. That was the whole thing. I need some interest, uh, intrigue, that sort of thing. But they just completely, the WWE just completely botched that. And, and heck, they didn't even do the good um, heel thing. It was, it was leaning towards Punk and Lauren Irons, but yet they turned to Lauren Irons and Cena? Huh? You know, that stuff, it just feels like, you know, they just try so hard to get CM, John Cena something to do. But personally, the problem is they just don't know where they're headed. They don't know what they're doing. It's just they're trying to input so much, 
<clears throat> Stock and Cena, who honestly has already gone over, who's already done everything he needs to do besides a heel turn in his character, and there's nothing really he can do anything. It just he's just or what have you. There's no real need for him to be in this whole storyline main event thing. Uh, what have you? What's going on with CM Punk? I wish they would have picked someone out and Rob, like someone like Kofi Kingston, who's trying for um, who's wearing the Intercontinental title, which at this point is one of the most pointless championships. Um, in the WWE right now. In fact, there's a lot of Portland's championships. I mean, USA, the United States Championship, I love, I love Antonio Cesaro, but my, I mean, uh, Claudio Castagnoli, but Antonio Cesaro is one of the most boring wrestlers today. Seriously, people want to, I mean, honestly, he's, Antonio Cesaro is right around what Dakota Darsal is. He's in Dakota Darsal land. That's how bad Antonio Cesaro is. He's completely forgettable. He doesn't have anything anything good, it just seems like he's just there. <clears throat> but the only positive of Antonio Savalo is just he can, at least he can actually wrestle. I don't know how um, Darso can't. But you know what I'm getting at. And you look at the Divas Championship, uh, pointless storyline with Divas that no one really cares about. Uh, Eve, Caitlin, and uh, Layla, who I think Layla is a very good wrestler, and she actually had pretty good matches. But we, the uh, WRs, have been conditioned to say, you know, after these short matches and everything else, that the WWE Divas don't care, and they're going to look back and say, hey, why don't we get any reaction to the Divas matches? Well, you trained them to say, well, the WWE Divas are just not, are not even worth mentioning. They barely get any story time. Any other divas don't get any of their storylines or anything else outside of the vision. They don't do anything. I mean, they have these only one or two or three minute matchups, and and even with the WWE, I think I think even the championship belt does not really. I know some people may like it, but honestly, maybe it's just me. Maybe it just it doesn't really scream the wrestler title. It just seems like something. Um, not the girl I would have. I, I mean, if, if there are females who. Like the Divas belt, guys like the Divas belt, fine, whatever. But I just see like I look at that belt. I'm like, well, honestly, it's just it just seems like a like a tiara or something, like some type of uh, um, nothing really. Like it's not a wrestler's belt, you know what I mean? Maybe I'm just too stickler. Like I, a lot of people may block. I hate the knockouts division. Or whatever. At least to me, the knockouts title looks like a, a championship belt to me. I feel like. That is something where, like, two female warriors are fighting over. The Divas Championship, uh, I don't know. It 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 doesn't look like a championship belt that's honestly really, you know, good for or what have you. It just feels like it's not really a a belt that maybe I'm wrong. If someone can correct me, put me a video response or um, comment or what have you. But this is my personal opinion. I just don't like the Divas belt. It just... It's not only books like it's not only booked like an afterthought. It is an afterthought. <clears throat> if that makes sense, um, it just seems like he they booked the, the division as an afterthought, and the championship just well, honestly, it just really looks like an afterthought. Anyway, I'm gonna take my uh, little break here. I'll be right back. I'm gonna um, when we do come back, we'll be gonna be talking about my, um, the breakdown of ratings and see. You know, what was high, what was low, and what have you. Anyway, this is Duke CT, and we'll be right back here on the Duke CT Lounge. Thank you. 
And we are back live here on the Dixie Tea Lounge. The phone number, as always, is 724-444-7444. And the call ID to connect to me, Dixie T, is 92417. Once again, the call ID is 92417. How are y'all doing this evening, ladies and gentlemen? I hope y'all doing well wherever you are. <sighs> All right, let's get back to Monday Night Raw and the horrible ratings and such. So let's look at the uh, segment breakdowns there. Ray Mysterio, Sin Cars, Cody Rose, and Damian Sandow open with a 2.46 quarter rating, which is actually, yeah, that's very weak. And it's already started out with a bad. It's Raw well started off bad with the Ray Mysterio, Sin Cara, Cody Rose, Damian Sandow. It was a very good match, but was actually very weak. It didn't get much ratings at 2.46. It started at 2.46. Kofi Kingston and Michael McGillicully actually lost viewers with 41,000 views. And then the Cena, John Cena's promo with CM Punk and Paul Heyman <coughs> gained 530,000 viewers. And Justin Gabriel versus Antonio Cesaro um, the rematch lost 372,000 viewers. And I want to see the high point of the week's wall was actually the Vince McMahon, AJ Lee, Paul Heyman, Vicky Guerrero, Vicky Guerrero segment. As you know, like Vicky Guerrero is now the managing supervisor. She's running Monday Night Raw, people. She's running Monday Night Raw, and I don't care. But honestly, that segment game. Um, 5,000, let's see, over 529 viewers for a 2.91 quarter rating. That, this, that segment beat out the Cena Punk segment. That, that, that beat out the Cena Punk segment. But that gained the 500, 300,000 viewers. The Miz, Ryback, in the backstage ball with Le- Le- uh, Layla, Eve Torres, and Caitlin, that combined lost a 613,000 viewers, ladies and gentlemen. So that huge brawl and Ryback, yeah. Yeah, Ryback basically is not looking good for Ryback. Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler lost 253,000 viewers. That match was one of the most talked about in recent weeks, but, yeah, it did not do so well. It's funny. The stuff I liked about the show, two of the things I liked about the show, (coughs) (coughs) sorry, the two things I liked about the show, Ray Mysterio, St. Card, and the Road Scholars match didn't have a good uh, ratings, and Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler. Did not have good ratings as well. It actually lost viewers. In fact, it was it actually finished with a two point three one quarter rating, the lowest for a non holiday raw segment in fifteen years. And here's the sad part: its record was broken later that night. So yes, it, it gets worse. The Game Show segment that was Team Hell Now and the Kane versus Big Show gained 62,000 viewers in the 10 p.m. time slot. <clears throat> John Cena confirmed Vince McMahon and Zack Ryder versus Alberto Del Rio gained 26,000 viewers. And yet, after the match, no one really cared about Alberto Del Rio winning. By the way, I'm going to say I'm going to pause about the whole rating thing and, and talk about that for a second. A bunch of the real, after he beat up Zack Ryder, there was nothing from the crowd. Absolutely nothing. They were like, I, I turned up the volume on my TV and I was like, there has to be some reaction. There was nothing. They were like, the real was like, I don't know what we call it, like, it, was, it was trying. They were trying, but they were like, he was trying, but the crowd was like, I don't care. They didn't really care. They didn't care. It's just amazing. It is a testament how how badly that WWE booking is truly is. They took someone with great talent, a great guy in the ring, a uh, worker in the ring, Del Rio, 
with an interesting character and then drug it to the ground where people are just don't even give a damn anymore. It could have done something with the last year, could have been something interesting, but instead they turned him into a completely and utterly forgettable character. Bravo, WWE. Bravo. And now, <clears throat> the main event. But here's the funny thing. The lowest quarter, the quarter rating going back 50 years that happened as... Because <clears throat> remember, I talked about this in the Bachelor ratings. The Brown Bryan Dolph Ziggler match lost, I mean, lost 253,000 viewers and was on the lowest rating of Monday Night Raw segment history of the past 15 years. That record, and here's the reason what happened. Uh, the record-breaking went, I'm not talking about the record-breaking one right now. The lowest current rating going back in 15 years happened as the Dolph Ziggler segment, a Ryback video, and the Lumberjack entrances. The Lumberjack entrances lost all these segments combined Lost 319,000 viewers for a 2.15 quarter rating. Wow. That is amazing. <coughs> that is sad. And, and I like Ziggler, and I actually do like Ryback, and most of the Lumberjacks, too, even though most of the Lumberjacks are nothing but jobbers at this point. It's I, it, it, it's it's just all dropping. I know they had, like, other things happening. I know the baseball game was happening, the Game 7 World Series, but then that was going to be a route, so I guess people start tuning in at 10 o'clock. Then they had the um, Monday Night uh, Football, which, honestly, that was – I actually looked at some of the highlights – yeah, that game was a pretty much a does. I can't see people started to go back to Raw, but and I know there was a pre- presidential debate, but honestly, it's the third debate, and most of the people are watching that. While it did win the night, I, I mean, I watched some of it, but I don't think it's going to really change much people's minds if you want to get political and all that stuff. But um, it, I think, honestly, it just seems to be a real problem. The WWE just don't know how. I mean, seriously, WWE has turned most of the talent to, I mean, this talent, I mean, Dolph Ziggler is, uh, is going to be pie, uh, is going to a pri- uh, going to be world champion, hopefully, by the end of Hell in a Cell. <coughs> Ryback, who's basically a WWE champion, has a real good shot at being the WWE champion. And most of the Lumberjacks are key positions, like, you know, uh, primetime players and um Brodus Clay, all those guys, you know, all those guys, or what have you, and then it's just these, when you have this huge loss, it just tells me that there is something, I mean, they're really, really just, the product is just really does not know what the uh, the audience wants anymore. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is the go-home show for Hell in a Shell. Hell in a Cell Go Home Show, and this is your lower, um, the lowest ratings at Dolph Ziggler segment, uh, right back video, and Lumberjack's entrances and such. That's sad. But there are some good news. The Lumberjack, the biggest Lumberjack match of main event ever, which honestly I didn't really care for, with CM Punk versus Seamus actually gave a million viewers. So, yeah, CM Punk and Seamus, even though they got no real heat from the crowd, <clears throat> they got a million people back. They got a million people back for that 2.89 rating. So, while you haters think CM Punk can't draw, he can draw. But don't, I don't blame CM Punk when the product around him sucks. This is what happens when you have no, the product of your the product is a toxic uh, product. This is what happens, people. And honestly, I'm not surprised by this. I'm not surprised at it at all, but you shouldn't be surprised either. And it's just mind-boggling to me. I mean, really mind-boggling to me when you have a guy, uh, a company like this, a company who was the trailblazer. This is the number one company right now 
in pro wrestling right now, ladies and gentlemen, and then acting like this, this is this is really is a bad time. This is really is really people is uh, hopefully a wake up call for them because if they don't stop, if they don't wake up, they're gonna be um. You don't think it's not going? You don't think the W W E can't go away? They can, and I don't care how. I don't care how many times uh, they look like they're gonna win the night. Like so, they're sixth place. Uh, they still are like sixth place in the cable uh, broadcast. They're sixth place in the cable broadcast, and what have you. For how long? I mean, the ratings are slowly dipping. I honestly will believe. I believe by the end of this year, we might see Raw having a 1.8 rating, or worse, maybe a zero point. I mean, it could get to impact level. Too. They're at impact. Honestly, let's be honest. They're two steps away from being an impact. So, uh, impact wrestling territory. Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw, people. This is one of the most longest episodic wrestling pro. I mean, I mean, sports entertainment shows. What have you? Damn it, it's, it's wrestling. What have you? It is one of the most longest running wrestling shows on the in the United States. One of the most longest prime time in North America. Uh, what, what have you? This is. And this type of rating, the way it is going down right now, it is upwards to a. It is honestly, it's like the Titanic. I know Titanic was a. I know I'm being a little facetious, but I'm not saying WWE is going to go out of business. And honestly, if Raw does go down, I think WWE would probably go out of business. But honestly, the, uh, the ratings juggernaut is slowly but surely just going down, and the product is going down with it. I mean, does anyone really care about Hell in a Cell? I don't care. In fact, I was going to think about actually doing a preview about the show, but honestly, does anyone truly care about Hell in a Cell? No, no, no. I don't care about it. I guarantee you guys don't care about it either. I mean, when's the last time I actually did a a a preview show? Uh, was it Night of Champions? I, I I I know maybe I should have done a preview show. I maybe do a you uh, maybe I'll make a YouTube video about that. But I'm sorry, I just feel very 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 disappointed about this whole thing. It just feels like I I really want WWE to do well, but if they don't really um, honestly, if I, if they don't really have a reason for me to care, I mean they don't honestly what. They don't seem to care about what their product because hey, 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 man, I, they, they're going to come in regardless. So you know what? I'm not going to care either. Anyway, so, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me for the Duke CT Lounge. Thank you so much for listening. Anyway, this is uh, Duke CT here. Peace and love. I will see y'all when I see y'all. Later.